Hi, welcome to Get Known, Be Seen Web TV. I'm your host, Trish Springsteen, and it's my absolute delight in this particular episode to welcome Robert B. Foster. Hi, Robert. Hi, thank you for having me. Appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely delighted, and I'm looking forward to our conversation. Now, for those who are not sure what Get Known, Be Seen Web TV is about, hey, it's all about being seen and being known. My guests that I have on the show are those who have got something that they suddenly want to shout out to the universe, and they have this opportunity to do that. But I also have people who are experts or have lived experience in getting up, picking themselves up, brushing themselves off, and getting out there and being seen. And they're going to share some of their tips. And one of those people is what we is the person that we have today, and that is Robert B. Foster. So let me tell you a little bit about Robert before we get into our conversation. Robert's from America, and I'm absolutely delighted. And I do believe Rhode Island, if that's correct, Robert. Yes. Yay. We might have a little chat where Rhode Island is for my viewers. Now, Robert yeah. B. Foster is an inspirational speaker, a podcast host, and fitness coach, having faced some of the most daunting career and life crises. Robert offers unusual depth and value to audiences hungry for personal growth. Despite a knee injury at the age of 34 that almost cut a hole in his athlete dreams, he persevered and changed his story. And I think that's pretty awesome. Even when he was facing a foreclosure and a struggling business, he never gave up. These experiences only strengthened his resolve and gave him the perfect jump board for stories about defying the odds. Now, Robert's a podcast host, a fitness host, and as I mentioned, an inspirational speaker. And so I am delighted. We're going to find out how did you, Robert, jump up and defy these odds? Let's gonna share a bit about that journey up to where you are now. Well, we have to start with the mental programming, and that came from my upbringing. So I'm the youngest of seven siblings. We were all athletes, and my parents were athletes as well. So that, that mentality of just put the work in, put your head down, don't make excuses, you know, don't talk negatively about yourself, like all of that was instilled at a very young age. And especially my father led by example, because he was an engineer, and he was constantly building things and just, he was just always making stuff. Every time you pull in the house, something's under construction. It's like, what is dad making now? But the thing that stood out is he always found a way, no matter what. And I'll share a quick story. My parents bought a new refrigerator and they bought a new dining room table. And so when it gets to the house, the table was a little bigger than they anticipated. So you couldn't fully open the door to go outside. And so now normal people would have either gotten a smaller fridge or a smaller table. So I'm pulling into my parents' house and I see the siding on the house is ripped off. <laughs> and I'm like, what is this man doing? He reframed the wall and he switched the door in the window. <laughs> so, so he put the door on the far side so that the door could open and he put the window over here because he wanted that table and he wanted that fridge. So just watching him always finding a way, you know, is really where the name Shut Up and Grind came from. Ah, awesome. Awesome. I think that's awesome. It's like, yeah, that is really looking outside the square and looking yes. for a different way. And I think that's a great story, viewers. You, you need to just, if you go back and again and listen to what, uh, Robert just shared because it is about stepping outside and you just mentioned there shut up and grind and that's your podcast do you want to give a little bit of a background to that name actually I, I love the name it's really intriguing so years ago on blog talk radio right when I got into fitness I actually started a show called shut up and exercise and it was just all about exercise you know getting out of the mental space that, that's keeping people out of shape. Because it's not that it's too hard. It's not because it costs too much money. It's not because you don't have time. It's not because because you, you have kids. There's many, many, many fit people that deal with all of those same things. It's just the stories 
that we tell ourselves. And so when shut up and exercise came came about, I would tell people, okay, when you're done with all, all those excuses, put the work in. You know, when you're done with all those reasons, put the work in. So it was basically telling them to just shut up and exercise. So now as I was, now we fast forward 12 years and the gyms get shut down in 2020. And so with the gym being shut down, it's like, I need something to do. So I was like, you know what? I, I wanted the podcast for years. So I was just, I'll be transparent. I was afraid to get it started because, you know, there's a lot of celebrities out there and former athletes and, you know, like all, all these, these TV personalities that have these podcasts and it's like, who's, who's going to listen to me? So I had a little bit of imposter syndrome going on, but then I had to take my own advice. It's like, if you want to get this done, we got to shut up and we got to make it happen. So I didn't want to just be about fitness. You know, it's like, there's enough people talking just about fitness. I wanted to come up with a message that could speak to a teacher, that could speak to a student, that could speak to an elementary school student, that could speak to a retiree, you know, could speak to a doctor, could speak to a janitor. So I wanted to come up with a central message that anyone, any gender, any race, any religion, any anything could benefit from that message. And I said, one thing that's universal is the grind. And the more that I've had international guests on, I've had people from Thailand, from India, Indonesia, the Philippines, Mexico, Africa. And the central theme is people had to put in work. They had to step out of their comfort zone. Right. It didn't, didn't matter who they worshipped. It didn't matter who they loved. None of that stuff mattered to get to where they wanted to be. They had to take control of the direction of their life and they had to put the work in and make it happen. Awesome. Awesome. And I think one of the things I'd like to explore a little bit about that uh, in a minute is that what you've given us is a very good basis for our life. And people yes. who sort of think, oh, uh, you know, these you know, podcasts or even my show, it's all about business. It's all about people that I'm thinking, no, uh, we do focus a little bit on business. You focus on exercise. But when you look at the concepts behind it, the mindset that you've mentioned, it is stuff that we can take into our own lives and help us with our personal growth. I love the fact that you mentioned you're afraid and imposter syndrome. I mean, hey, this is basis of what a lot of people stops them from doing it. And I know that you were talking about your mindset, but you have some tips there for people that you could maybe share about, you know, how do we get through that imposter syndrome? How do we do that? It is you have to take your own advice because most people know what they want to do, but they take, <clears throat> excuse me, but they take advice from other people and they end up talking themselves out of it. And I dealt with that when I started the fitness business it was in 2009 here in the States, we were in a recession. And so things were, things were pretty tough economically. And people were telling me, you can't start a business now. You have five young kids. You know, you're, you're, you're crazy. You're chasing a dream. You're doing this. You're doing that. But I saw the impact that I was having on people's lives. Because I, I originally started it as a hobby. You know, I was a restaurant manager. And I was just coming home stressed all the time. Because I was just at that point to where I didn't want to be like my dad was at everything and I was starting to miss so much stuff just because of my schedule <clears throat> and I didn't want to do that anymore and I kind of lost my athletic background like I was an all-american in track and field and now it's like I, I just wasn't doing anything and so I actually built a gym into my spare bedroom in my old house more so for me just so I could come home I could decompress for a half an hour and not take my frustrations out on the family and my, my now ex. I was just coming home just very aggravated. And I just found myself getting to the restaurant and I, I just didn't wanna be there anymore. Mm. It's like, I'm a happy guy, I'm a, I'm a fun loving guy. And I did well as a restaurant manager, like I climbed the ladder, I got awards, I got promotions, made bonuses, but I, I knew I wasn't doing what I was meant to do. Hey, when I was 17 years old, I grew, up, I grew up in the woods. So there's all trees in the backyard. And I remember I had a stick in my hand and I was giving a motivational speech to the trees, right? And, and my, 
my mom comes out onto the deck and she's like, boy, what are you doing? And I look back and I said, I'm motivating the masses. You know, so like, so I, I knew then I wanted to do something in this space. And then I ended up dropping out of college, not once, not twice, but three times. And so after the third time, I was like, all right, so college obviously isn't for me because I keep leaving. I said, so I guess I'm already managing restaurants. So let me just do that. Because you're told if you don't have a college degree, you're not, you can't go anywhere. And so I let that resonate in my brain, going back to taking other people's opinions, and I made it my reality. So I spent, you know, 15, 16, 17 years as a restaurant manager, and it just one day it just hit me, I don't want to do this anymore. And so where the fear steps in is, okay, so I don't want to do this anymore, but it's paying the bills. <laughs> it's paying for the house. It's paying for the cars. It's paying to feed the children. And so like, how do I just walk away, even though I'm having more fun over here and I'm more fulfilled over here? I know it's a long answer, but it's all relevant. No, and this so, is so I love it. Okay. okay. And so I'm more fulfilled over here. But what the kicker was, so this was when Planet Fitness was just starting to pop up all over the place here in the U.S. anyway. And so I had people training in my garage. And this wasn't one of these nice garages garages at all it was falling apart you know it's like I had heat you know for, for the winter thank god but other than that it, it was just not a nice garage I'm just really good at selling what people really want <laughs> so <laughs> one, so one of my clients comes up to me I was charging 50 bucks a month for three for three classes a week which now I charge like triple that maybe even quadruple that and so she comes up to me and she goes before I give you this check she's like I just want you to know that there's a, a brand new state-of-the-art Planet Fitness two minutes from my house. She's like, it's $10 a month. She's like, I'm willing to give you five times the amount because you helped me believe in myself when I couldn't. And at that moment, I was like, this is far bigger than weight loss. This is far bigger than just running faster or jumping higher. It's like when she said that to me, I knew I was on to something special. Now, I didn't have good credit and I don't have a college education, but I knew I could make people feel invincible. So I was like, I have to follow this path. And just one thing I want the audience to take away is when you follow the path you're supposed to be on, you're going to see all the opportunities that were already there. It's like I wasn't seeing it because I, I was in the fire of the restaurant industry. I was in the fire of missing things with my kids and having to, to leave early and having to break plans and getting called in on my days off that I wasn't seeing the opportunities right in front of my face. So once I started focusing in on what I really wanted, everything positive started to happen. I love that. Thank you for sharing that story because I think that's, that's basically people. It's normal people. Often uh, people, especially some moms that watch my show and they come back and talk to me about, they say it's because we have ordinary people. Uh, and often we see we can't do these things because we put these big you know, stars and they're, they're well-known and they're rich and, and, and the ones that really got through huge adversity and that, but they don't touch, you know, with it. Well, they do it, can do it, but I can't because I'm an ordinary person. And we need to be able to tell people that everybody's ordinary. Everybody's this, you know, you've all got good stuff. And I think I love that story because I love the follow the path. And I really, really, people go back and listen to that story again. You can stop it now. I don't mind. You can rewind it and you can listen to, again to that story that Robert shared because that has a lot of gold nuggets in that story. It's taking your own advice and following the path. One of the things I want to bring out and I, I loved it because the way you said you changed the name of your podcast and how you realized that it wasn't just exercise that you were doing. There was a lot of other stuff. And I think that to me was indicating that you're celebrating your uniqueness and finding your uniqueness. Is, yeah. is that how you see that? That, that, is, that is how I see that. Because even in the gym, there's all walks of life who come in. It's, like, it's not just people who are a size two and have 
of super high metabolism. Like you're gonna see people who are super tall, you're gonna see people who are very short, you're gonna see people who are bigger, people who are smaller, people in the middle, people who may be naturally gifted, people who have to kick, scratch, and claw to get everything that they that they get results-wise. And that's that's everyday life. That's everyday life. Like not everybody rolls out of bed and they're just ready to tackle life. Like myself included, there were some days, some where the alarm goes off where I'm like, oh, but there's like, oh, no, no, no. It's like, people need me. People need me. I got to get up. I got to get the shower. I got to get dressed and get the happy face on because I have to show up because people are depending on me to be their inspiration. Right. And that's that's huge. And so once you once you understand that, it's like people people forget that we're human, too. It's like we go through those emotions as well. It's like people think because I own a fitness business that I love to work out. I do not love to work out. I don't. But I know as an athlete, right, I'm going to be 48 years old in a month, right? So as an athlete, if I don't work out, I'm going to lose my athletic ability. You know, so at my age, I can still get out on the basketball court, on the volleyball court, on the softball field. I still compete in track and field against people half my age and I'm still winning gold medals. So it's like, so I have a deeper reason than just, than just I wanna lose weight or I want muscles or I want, you know, those are all cosmetic reasons. You know, for me, the fountain of youth is keeping your youth as long as you can. And people lose it because they stop using it. And such is just everyday day life. People work in a job that they can't stand, but they're comfortable or they're content, or they're just grateful for what they have, which all sounds good on the surface, but you're telling yourself a fake story. Yeah. You know, because society says that's okay to say. What your spirit is telling you is that you're underachieving. Yeah. And all that time I spent in the restaurant, yes, I helped employ people. I helped people get promotions. I helped people become managers. You know, there were, there were a lot of positives in there. But at the end of the day, we were just stuffing too many calories down people's throats. It's like, that's what I was really doing. And so now I get to help people go from a place of I can't to maybe I can to I believe I can to I can. It's like, it's a whole journey. It's not a switch that just happens overnight where they come in one day, 25 pounds overweight, no energy, low self-esteem. And it doesn't just switch in a week. Like it's an entire journey. And watching that process is so rewarding. Like, and again, I'll share a quick story. I do a lot of obstacle races with my clients. And initially we, I started doing these because I like, it. <laughs> and then, then I started I, it like, it was one of my own journeys because I had two major surgeries. So I had a major knee injury where I was told I'd never run a jump again. And then I donated a kidney to my sister. And I was told that it was gonna take like six to eight months to get back to full health again. And so before I even had the surgery, I scheduled my first obstacle race for 12 weeks out. <laughs> that way, that way I was forced to train for it. Yeah. You know, so so where I was going with that is we we are in control of our lives. We're in control of what we do. I mean, yeah, can the government play a role? Yeah. They can. Can outside influences infiltrate your brain? It can. Can your significant other try to talk you out of something? They can. But at the end of the day, you are in control. And you have to decide, no, that's not happening. When that doctor said that to me, you will never run or jump again. I took it to heart at first. I may have shed a tear. I may have. And I looked back at him. And I said, with all due respect, I swore, but I'm not going to swear. I'm going to respect your show. But I said, you don't believe, know me like that. I said, you're qualified to fix my knee. I will take care of how I heal. And then I was able to make a full recovery. And just this past weekend, I ran my 161st and 162nd races. Wow. Awesome. And, and I've, been, I've been undefeated in track and field since I came back in the high jump and the long jump. And, and the discus actually, and the 200 meters. <laughs> so like, there's a lot of things that I, somebody else told me I'd never be able to do that I've come back and I haven't lost since. <laughs> so well, we are in control of our path. And like, 
again, that I want the audience to understand that, yes, there are outside factors that could skew the lines a little. You know, it won't be a straight line. You might have to zigzag a little, but you can still get there. Absolutely. Well, you know, that actually resonates very much to my own heart because uh, one of my favourite quotes uh, from a... Uh, from a rock opera called Time. And it, it says it's that the only person who has absolute control over you and your attitude and your response is you. Yes. And I think it's extremely powerful from what you, you know, your story is very powerful to highlight that. And it is very powerful to understand that when you realize that, when you accept, it becomes empowering. And it yes. does give you that control. Uh, I love the, um, I want to talk a little bit more about you're, you just mentioned a sentence there. I'm very good at selling what people want. And I thought, well, that is a, that is a takeaway point uh, because I think a lot of people hear the word selling and they back off. They don't think they can sell. And a lot of people even hear the word marketing and they back off and they don't think they can market. So can we just explore that little statement a little bit Absolutely. more, how you see that working? Because that's what and, you've done with yourself. Yes, and I'll give you a real world, world example. So at the gym, I'm onboarding a new trainer. And so yesterday we were talking about doing the tours of the facility. And so I explained to her, I said, when you're given a tour, I said, we are not showcasing the facility. We're showcasing the tools that will get them to their goals. I said, so when they come in, we don't just immediately show them the facility. We go into the office and we say, what are you looking for? You know, so it's like, we want to get to the heart of why you're here. You know, it's like, what are your specific goals? I want to lose weight. How much weight? Why do you want to lose that weight? What will that do for you? How will that, that improve your life? How will that improve life for the people around you? Are you reaching this thing? You know, so, so we're making it bigger than just them then we take that information and then we do the tour and we say, all right, you said you wanted, you know, you coming off of a knee injury. So you'll want to strengthen your quads, your hips and your glutes. And we have these machines here that can address that need. You also said your endurance isn't the best. So we, we recommend metabolic workouts, which are battle ropes and the endless rope and the TRX bands, which we have here. So it's like, even though I'm showing the equipment, um, letting them see how you can conquer your goals with these things. And most people are like, these are our treadmills. Our treadmills can speak in nine different languages and blah, 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 right? People yeah. really don't care, care about that. So when they're coming into a facility, they're like, I have a specific need because nobody comes in to tour a gym because they're feeling great about themselves. You know, I don't want to say nobody, but 90% of the people that come into the gym have some level of insecurity. And so, and it's not even a manipulation. So it's a manipulation to just show them the children the gym, sign them up, and then not give them any guidance on how to reach what it is they want to reach. You know, like the name of your show, Get Known, Be Seen, Web TV. So people should know coming to you, you're going to show us how to get known and be seen, right? Right? It's like that. That's your model. So when I'm coming to you, that's all I want to hear. Yeah. <laughs> so, don't so when, yeah, you don't want to hear how long it takes me to edit a video, uh, what exactly. you've got to do after the interview, how, where you got to put it. You don't want to know that. You want to know when I watch this, is it going to meet my need? Is it going to answer some questions for me? And that's yes. absolutely, I love what you've done because people take those questions. You know, again, hey, I'm quite okay if you want to stop it right here and go back and listen to that again because that is another mm -hmm. extremely vital point. Because that is the basis of how you can sell without selling. Because selling isn't selling the product. It's not that. It's what the person can do with it and how it can change their lives and why they yes. want it. And that's what we're looking for. So they're extremely good points for you. Because if you want to get out there being seen, my question to you is why? Where? What is it that you want to be seen about? What is it going to do for you? And, and people, if you have a product and a service, a book, whatever it is, you can't stand behind the door. You, you listen to what Robert's been sharing with us. It's all about taking what you've got and saying, hey, I am here. And that's getting outside your comfort zone. What do you think has been your biggest challenge in, in, in where you are? Um, biggest challenge in being known? Is it word of mouth? What else have you been doing? 
you just got to be, you got to put yourself in front of the right people, mm-hmm. you know, and, and the right person isn't always someone that has a million followers. You know, it could be a person that has 10 followers and in those 10, there's that one person that knows someone who knows someone. <laughs> it's like when I first started my podcast, I had no clue how to get guests. None whatsoever. Like I shared earlier, it's like, who's going to want to listen to me when there's Joe Rogan and, you know, all these big name, big name celebrities that have these podcasts. But that, but then it's like, you know what? I can't worry about that. I have to worry about the message. Like, what is my message going to be? Because there's people out there who just went through an awful, awful divorce and they're feeling horrible about themselves and they don't know how to pick up the pieces. There's someone who just dealt with a friend or a loved one who took their own lives or someone who lost a parent. Like I watched my father pass away in 2019. You know, like there's people that need to know how to pick up the pieces when life throws you lemons. It's like, and I want to create something that addresses that need. I said, so I'm just going to turn on my camera and just start talking. Like I didn't really have any structure, no real theme but I knew I had a mission, like there's people who are hurting. Mm -hmm. And so the biggest thing was at first, what if I offend people? What if I, what if I talk about a topic that people don't want to hear? Then finally it's like, you know what? They don't have to listen. Is that, is is, is that simple? This podcast I listen to, I don't listen to every single episode. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's one that catches my eye, great. Like on my show, I interviewed a former pimp. I interviewed a Playboy centerfold. I interviewed a a former gang member, you know, so a former drug dealer, you know, so like not everybody has these rosy paths, you know, some of them are very, very dark, you know, people have have hurt other people, but, you know, they paid their dues, you know, they had their lives changed, they've spent time in jail, and now they're turning it around, and uh, they're taking what they did to try to help other kids not go down that path. So, so there are stories of redemption out there. And, you know, there are people who have hit rock bottom who have been able to pick up the pieces and move forward. And I've even helped people who were guests on the show have breakthroughs with their situations, you know? So, and and even myself, so I actually had one of my episodes a little bit before this one, and this guy was talking about, you know, how to, how to make more money. And we speak a lot of the same language. Like a lot of the things he was saying, I was like, did you plagiarize my stuff? <laughs> it, was like, it was like, we, we, we're really doing a lot of the same things. But he just has had a better way of getting it out there. He's got to bring an eight-figure business, you know. And so as, as he's talking, I'm sitting here with my notebook and I'm taking notes. It's like, I'm learning on this episode myself. So I created something where I can teach, we can teach others, and I can learn as well. So it's like a win all the way around. It's always a win. I mean, you've just let out my little secret. Why do you think I have my show about being known, being seen? Hey, all the guests that come on there, I have heaps of notes, people. And I actually learn and put those things into place. So Yes. I think out of that, one of the things that maybe should be a takeaway for, you know, for those watching is that you don't have to know everything. You don't have to know everything before you take a step out there. Uh, if you've got something and a message or something, a service, something that you, you love doing and, and you've got a bit of expertise or life experience in there, you don't have to know everything about it. Yes. You just have to know a little bit more than the person that you're helping. And one of the reasons is if you share your story, as Robert's been sharing his story, he doesn't know which points in those stories are going to resonate with rich people, but he does know that somewhere in that story, it will resonate with someone. Yes. And that's the most important part of getting up and sharing your stories. Because if you don't yes. share your stories, it's not going to resonate with anyone at all. Yeah. Oh, but we could probably speak for quite a few hours because I really do know that we resonate a lot and I love your stories and I know, absolutely know, you have a lot of many more stories to share with us. And people, if you've been hearing me say stories, it's because that's one of the ways of being known and being seen is standing up and sharing your stories. So I'm just going to ask you the top two tips 
if we're going to talk about being seen, being known, what would be your top two tips for people to do something right now? Well, you said one of them already. And you said is just get comfortable with the fact that you don't have to know everything. Because people want all the I's dotted, all the T's crossed, but before they make a move. Nope, just get to the cliff and jump. Worry about the parachute later, just jump. And the second one is you don't have to have everything. You know, you don't have to have the website. You don't have to have the fancy email marketing with the autoresponders. Like you don't have to have any of that stuff. Again, I started my fitness business in the spare bedroom of my old house with yard sale gym equipment and Walmart gym equipment. Now, even when I finally opened up my 5,000 square foot facility, we didn't have everything. At the time we had maybe six kettlebells. We had two medicine balls. We had a handful of dumbbells. We had a handful of rub rubber plates, but we, we started, we opened. And then as we got more successful, we added more things. You know, where, where people go wrong, and especially in the gym industry, is people build the gym first. You know, they build a gym, they get all the fancy equipment and all the knickknacks and they're $100,000 in debt, but you have no one to train. Yeah. It's like when I opened my facility, we had 168 clients when we opened because I started in parks. I started in my garage, you know, and, and as I as I grew bigger, I got more things like people like new things. Yeah. People don't want things taken away. You know, so you don't want to be in this beautiful new gym that you just bought, but now you have to downsize because you can't afford the overhead because you don't have enough clients, yeah. right? That's a recipe for disaster. So you don't have to know everything, know enough to get started, and you don't have to have everything. Get a Facebook page, it's free. Start with that, you know, and you don't have to do paid, uh, paid Facebook ads yet. Start with your inner circle. Just talk to people everywhere you go. Just talk to people, whatever your product or service is, and just get the ball rolling. You make a hundred bucks, you know, maybe you can build a small website. You don't have to have the $5,000 website yet. Just get a small one, right? And then just over time, things will, will grow and get better for you. But those are the two biggest things is you don't have to know everything. You don't have to have everything. Awesome. I think they're extremely valuable. If nothing else, people, those two things, and then there's been a hell of a lot of other stuff that Robert has shared, but those two things are going to be, take them, work on them, do something with them, and you will find that you will be going somewhere. You will be achieving what you want. One last question before we go, who has influenced you the most? Who do you think has influenced you the most? I know it's I know it's cliche ish, but it, it was my dad because my dad just never let us settle it's like like we can go back to track and field. Now, mind you, the first bullseye was on one of my older brothers because he was constantly walking around with like his triple jump records on on his T-shirts and he, he would just and I'm, I'm sitting there writing them all down in a side pad and like, I'm going to smash all of this dude's records right but <laughs> that dad just never let us settle no matter what it was like in life you know he would tell us people are always going to see your skin color he's like it's up to you to help them see past it he's like if you're going to play basketball you may as well play to start like you don't want to play to be on the bench if you're going to play baseball you want to be a pitcher that way, that way you impact every aspect of the game. Like it was just always, always just don't settle. Don't settle. And I remember when I started in track and field in high school, I was five foot four. I was 88 pounds, scrawny. Okay, to put it in perspective, I'm 6'2", 180 right now. All right, so I was five four, 88 pounds. And I remember I walked into where our track meeting was and I asked the track coach for the record book. And he legit looked me up and he's like, he's like, you want the record book? And I was like, yeah. And he's looking at me like I had five heads. So, so he gave it to me. I'm like, I'm breaking this one. I'm breaking this one. And I'm breaking this one. And, and I handed it back to him. And he was like, you think you're going to break the high jump record? He's like, you don't have the build to be a high jumper. I held that high jump record for 21 years before somebody finally broke it. I held the triple jump record for 24 years, you know? So it's about taking, taking like the people who believe in you, you gotta lean into that. Cause too many times we resist the people who believe in us. 
that we don't see it. But dad believed in each of us so much. And we were all successful athletes and we're all successful now. But it started, I like, I like, I know I keep say, saying dad, but th there was like an 11, well, th yeah, there was an 11 year gap between my mom and my dad. So like my mom was really young when she had us. So a lot of those life lessons came from dad. And he, he just always instilled in us, like, no matter what you do, be the best at it. He's okay. like, if you're going to work in, in a restaurant, work on being the manager, work on being the district manager. You know, he's like, if you're going to be a janitor, be the janitor supervisor. <laughs> he's like, he's like no matter what the industry is, lead that industry. And so that's had the biggest impact on me. Absolutely awesome. Thank you for sharing. And it is not a cliche. Uh, the person who influenced you the most is the person who influenced you. And yeah. honestly, our parents, our siblings, or even our relatives, they stand a big chance because they're the ones that we see first and they're the ones that we have. The others that come with when we move outside of that field, and sometimes we find others that are influencing us as equal, but mostly they're the ones that mold us, and that's where it comes from. So thank you. I think that sharing, I think your father was an extremely wise man. Very well done. And look what these is. Uh, wherever he is at the moment, he's looking down and uh, thinking, well, yes. hey, my job was done. I succeeded. <laughs> awesome. Yes. Now, where could people get in touch with you if they want to have a conversation, Robert? So my website, although it's under construction right now, but it's robertbfoster.com. Okay. And on my Facebook page, you can go at Robert B. Foster. And on Instagram, it's at Robert B. Foster, but it's Robert underscore B underscore Foster. Because I have such a common name. That's why I have to make sure I, I have the B in there. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, I love that B. That's, but that, yeah, that's all about being unique. It's, it, the B yes. makes you unique. So awesome, people. I will have some of those links below here when we do post the uh, show up. I've absolutely thoroughly enjoyed having you on the show, Robert. Thank you for sharing yeah. so many, so many gold nuggets that people can take away in whatever area they want to do. Thank, Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. People, you've been watching Get Known, Be Seen Web TV. I'm Trish Springsteen, your host. We've been having an absolutely delightful conversation with Robert B. Foster. And I do urge you that if you want to know more about the people that I have on my show, you need to go to the link. There's links below. They'll be able to go and have a look at this show and have a look at the others. And then you know what? When you go to that channel, the Web TV channel, there is a huge button there. It's, you can't miss it. It's red. It's a button. It says subscribe. Do yourself a favor and click that because if you subscribe, then you'll never miss a new show that comes up because you never know. We've had a great conversation with Robert. I've had other great conversations with other people and I plan to have more great conversations. So you don't want to miss out on any of those. So if you hit that subscribe button, you can be able to be advised when those new shows come up. Now, if you're watching this and thinking, gee, I like Trish, that's awesome because I like me too. And you can then work with me and I'll have details below and you can contact me and we can have a conversation. If you'd like to be on the show and you're thinking, wow, I've got information or, oh, wow, I want to share something. Again, there's contacts below. Contact me. I'm always looking for people and always looking for guests. If you'd like me to be on your show, hey, again, you can go my website's up there. It has my media one sheet, has my speaker one sheet. So I'm available to speak on your stages, on your events, and I'd love to be on your podcast, your web TV. So you've been watching Get Known, Be Seen web TV. Robert, thank you so much for being with us all the way from Rhode Island. Now, just before we go, people, Rhode Island, Robert, give us a plug, whereabouts in America? So Rhode Island is right in between Massachusetts and Connecticut. So we're north of New York, but south of New Hampshire. Awesome. And it's extremely hot over there, as we were discussing beforehand. Right now, yes, I have my fan right over here blowing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, people. And that's another thing that you'll get on my show. We have a global, global reach, global, global visitors, global guests. Have an awesome day wherever you are. Get known, be seen, and listen to this show again to get all those gold nuggets that Robert Foster has shared. Bye for now.